Hi, my name's David Egan. I'm a philosopher by trade, and this here is the environment. And we'd like to invite you on a 10-week exploration of environmental philosophy. The bad news is the course won't take place out here. The good news is you can take it from anywhere. We'll have 10 weekly discussion sessions over Zoom, which will be complemented by a weekly video lecture in which I'll unpack some of the ideas and set the stage for the discussion. I offer a full money-back guarantee before the second week of class, so you can try the class out risk-free. And I also offer a pay-what-you-can option for those who can't afford the full course fee. Let me tell you a little bit about the content of the course. But before I do, I should just say this course is designed to be accessible to everyone. University-level reading skills are helpful, but I certainly don't expect anyone to have any prior background or training in philosophy. We'll start with an essay by the historian William Cronin, who challenges the idea of wilderness as a space that's set apart from human civilization. If we're going to talk about the environment, we're going to have to talk about indoor spaces like this one just as much as we're going to have to talk about mountains and forests. For the remainder of the first half of the course, we'll ask what sort of ethical relationship we should have with the environment. We'll look at Aldo Leopold's argument for a land ethic, according to which our fundamental ethical responsibility is to the land itself, and not simply to the humans and the animals that inhabit it. We'll look at Martin Heidegger's seminal essay on technology, in which he argues that the problem with technology isn't so much what we do with it, but rather the fundamental mindset of grasping and controlling that is implicit in our use of technology. We'll read a paper by the eco-feminist thinker Val Plumwood, who argues that certain structures of domination and subordination are present both in our treatment of the environment and in patriarchy's treatment of women, and that we need to address the two together. And we'll look at Robin Wall Kimmerer's approach to using traditional indigenous wisdom to think about how to respect the earth and to honor it. In the second half of the course, we'll broaden the scope somewhat to consider social and political questions that arise in relation to the environment. We'll read a legal brief by the scholar Christopher Stone, who argues that trees and other elements of the natural environment should have legal standing such that they have rights that can be defended in a court of law. With Ramachandra Guha and Juan Martinez Allier, we will consider the way in which people in low-income countries work with and protect the environments they live in, and ask how this environmentalism of the poor might be applied to environmentalism globally. We'll then look at the concept of social ecology with Murray Bookchin, who argues that we should dispense with hierarchical thinking, both in the way that we think about the natural world and in terms of how we think about the social world. And with Stephen Gardner, we will look at the intractable problem of climate change, which he describes as a perfect moral storm in which there are no easy solutions to getting global cooperation to a global problem. And then we'll close out the course with an argument from Sayed Hossein Nasser, who thinks that many of our problems in relation to the environment come from having lost a sense of the earth as sacred. And he'll ask what it might take to renew a sense of the sacredness of the earth in a secular age. I'd love to have you join me for my 10-week course in environmental philosophy. I can't promise it'll be a walk in the park, but it will open up some new vistas. Red roses too, I watch them bloom for me and you and I think to myself, what a wonderful world.